Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to take the opportunity to introduce you to SwiftUI, the new framework from Apple to build great applications with less code. Let's start with the simple ones. Let's start with what are the most basic views we can create with SwiftUI and what are the minimum requirements to start working in this new environment? My name is Pete and this, this is Swift Tips. We are here in a basic project that I just created. And before start seeing what's inside every Swift UI view, I wanted to take a moment to see where we are. So in iOS 14, what we have when we start project, let's just check. If we wanted to start a new project, we, we have many options, of course. Uh, we have in Xcode 12 the capability to create a multi-platform application, uh, which is in this case not something that we, we wanted. Um, we have also uh, obviously all the options for the other operating systems, but in our case, the obvious selection is application, right? So if we click next, we can uh, type the product name, which is in this case the name of the application. So we could test whatever we need. We also have the uh, identifier of this application, which is basically an ID that Apple will use once you upload your application to the App Store. And also, you have other two options, well, three options here to establish the configuration of your project. So one of them is the interface. Obviously, here is selected to UI, but you have two options. You, ha you have, obviously, uh, UI, but also the storyboard. If you select storyboard, you automatically will be selecting UI kit app delegate. It's the only option here, but if you go back and select Swift UI, you have the option to select uh, a life, uh, the application with a life cycle uh, with App Delegate from UIKit or make your app entirely in Swift UI, right? Uh, I want, we want to see the difference in a moment, right? But if you select a Swift UI application, um, and obviously you select Swift UI, of course the language available is Swift, right? And you also could select core data or including test. There's no, these options are both just for other video. In this case, uh, I just wanted to show you uh, how to, how I create my, the, the project, this project. So this is the basic configuration, uh, creating a Swift UI app. And in replace of the app delegate that most of you know, uh, we have this. We have this main new feature, the new property wrapper that established that this struct uh, that it's confirming the app protocol is actually the point of entry of our application. So in this case, this application is is, uh, is having this property, this computer property that is a scene uh, and it's uh, creating a window group that is containing the content view. Uh, maybe all this information is, is a lot for you, but don't worry, uh, we want to explore all the details about this in a later video. But for now, I just wanted to keep your eye on the content view, okay? Which is the point of our root view, right? Uh, okay, you, you see, you already saw uh, a body in the main app, but did you also see body here in this content view struct? Uh, what's that? So if we click here in the view uh, com with command click, we're going to see that this is actually a protocol, right? We're going to talk later about more in detail about protocols, but the only thing you need to know is that this protocol has an associated type body that is actually requiring a view to, to well, actually it's a, it's a type of uh, a view type. And um, the only requirement actually is a body, a body uh, a computer property called body that is um, attaching uh, deco is decorated with a view builder uh, property proper. What is this telling us is that inside of this body, if we go back, oops, we can see that 
we have here our body and the only requirement that body is is asking us is to provide uh, some kind of view that could be represented uh, in our view in our screen so as you can see in your right side there is already a preview uh, which was introduced in Xcode 13 uh, that is, is instantly giving us feedback about what we are writing for our view. In this case, we have a text text view that is, of course, uh, displaying strings for us in the application. And also, this text is having something really cool, this part in here, which is actually a modifier. A modifier is uh, basically a way you can uh, recreate your view in other uh, multiple different ways. So, for example, this is a padding that is actually uh, giving uh, a standard space between uh, every every side of the of the text. But you could also change the font, for example, right? So you could add body font. You could also change the foreground color, which you could change it to red. And the background, why not? In this case, is requiring us a, a view. In this case, I will use color dot blue, which is a, a view. Oh, it's not so good. Let's keep three. Okay, there you have it. Instantly, instantly, you are seeing all the changes right away, right? Without compiling, we are not compiling any more Xcode. Of course, there are some issues sometimes, but in general, uh, previews work uh, so well compared with the previous version of Xcode. Okay, cool. We have text, but what else we have? Uh, we have also images, right? I just added some couple of images for you, right? These are amiibos from uh, Nintendo, right? We're gonna use all, all these images for the next couple of uh, demos. And for example, if we uh, want to add uh, other kind of, of views, in this case images, which is another of the most important views for uh, Swift UI primitives. So there are many ways to initialize this view. I'm going to use the most basic one. Um, I'm going to remove this actually. And Let's use uh, Samus, for example. There you have it. You have Samus in your screen, right? But uh, you could also apply uh, other modifiers for these images. For example, you could add a frame, which uh, will give you uh, a specific uh, quantity of, of points uh, about, about the, the actual frame that, that will keep this image. This image. But as you can see, the image is up out of bounds, out of the frame so of this. What is this happening? Because, um, well, this image is actually rendered in the original size, right? It's not affecting, the, the frame is not affecting the image itself. It's just affecting the, the frame of the image, right? But there is a cool modifier here that is called resizable, which is basically adapting the the size of the image to the frame, to the frame that is containing the image. Okay, so cool. So it's really cool to to, to adapt the image in this way. Of course, you should take the care of, of using the correct aspect radio or modify the, uh, the aspect radio. We wanna see that later. All right, so what would happen if we wanted to include our previous text, oops, Previous text with with the image at the same time. Okay, looks like the text is is here, but the image just disappeared. What happened? Well, this is unexpected behavior because there is some conflicts to see uh, how to render these uh, images, these this, uh, views. Because essentially what is 
Buddy is asking us, he's asking us for a view, right? He's telling us, okay, give me what is the view you want to render, right? But the view could be a bunch of other subviews inside, right? So it could be as complex as you want, right? However, um, it's not great, right? So let's make some fix here to see how we could adapt this. And um, yeah, for, fortunately, we have a great way to fix this. We have the stacks. Uh, select here, well, I'm gonna give a space. We can use the stacks. In this case, we have three kinds of stacks. We have horizontal stacks, vertical stacks, and these stacks, which is basically uh, uh, well, a way to give uh, deepness in our views, right? So for this demo, I will use vStack. Right? And what we can do is just copy this and paste it here. There you go. Now for text, it's an image are displayed correctly, right? So uh, of course, depending of the of of the order of your subviews, is the way we want to render the information, right? Of course, you can change this and use horizontal stack. Yeah. Now the image is the, the text and image is uh, uh, one of the other in, in an horizontal way. And of course, you could use also this that. What happened here is that since that we are we are first drawing the text, the text is behind the, the image. So let's fix it. Right. There you have it. You cannot see it properly, but it's there. So yeah, there you go. So that's it for this video. I know that's a lot to cover, but believe me, there's a lot to see in later videos. So yeah, in the next one, we will talk about one of the most important uh, elements of CGI, which is list. And coming videos, we will explore also the state management. So stay tuned for the next videos. And thanks for supporting this channel. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great day.